All right, welcome to Swole Quest with Mike and Tad. You gotta get that first <laughs> sip of the day. You know it, fam. It's the most important part. So this is going to be a spinoff podcast. It's not going to replace the current podcast. I'm just replacing this week's episode with the first one. You're replacing fat with muscle. Exactly. Getting fit, getting swole, getting big, getting huge. Gotta, gotta eat big to get big. Six scoops. Come on! The, the purpose of this podcast, it's about, it's about uh, mental health. It's about <laughs> mental uh, physical health. health. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the three most important aspects of lifting? Well, t- first to introduce myself, this is uh, Lift the Knee Fit Tano, the internet's busiest lifting nerd. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. No. He also sometimes goes by Michael. Yeah, this is Michael Pulp Fan sixty nine. You know, you, you you guys get this. I mean, I don't know when this is coming out, but you know, a plug. So anyway, three most important aspects of lifting can be broken down thusly: uh, lifting is ten percent workout, twenty uh, percent diet, and seventy percent waifu. Exactly. Seventy. You've got to eat right. You've got to lift right. And you've got to love your 2D anime digital life. Goddamn right. Uh, in the immortal words of professional magic player Yuya Watanabe, uh, people often ask me, how can I get better at magic? And we'll just change magic to lifting or life in general. Uh, but during games, I only think about Azunyan, who is uh, from k which is an excellent show, which you should watch. Uh, so I can only say that the best way to improve your skills is to get a waifu. And how true is that? How true is that? I mean, he's a professional magic player. He's won several tournaments. He's got a lot of money. You gonna and he has a wife. You gonna call you him a liar? Those results. You can't call him a liar. I I ain't. He's gonna beat me up. Yeah. See, he's way better at magic than I am. See that that's the thing about lifting is if you're a nerd and if you're listening to this podcast, you are a nerd. Like, look in the goddamn mirror. Okay. Uh, <laughs> see, it's important to start off by insulting your viewers. Exactly. You have to break them down before you could build them back up into shining Adonises. So, um, you know, I've been lifting for probably about two and a half years now, seriously, and it's pretty awesome. It's the perfect normie cover. Like I've, I think uh, you got me lifting about a year and a half ago, and then I had, I, I had like breaks, but like I would go for like three months, and then I had to stop because of school yeah, or some yeah. bullshit. Consistency is start key. again, stop. And now I'm starting again, and now I have a podcast to keep up with, so I can't stop because of some dumb reason. Except unless, like, you know, my gym closes tomorrow or something. That's not going to happen. No, not at all. It it did. <laughs> it did. My gym's actually closing tomorrow. That's good. They couldn't handle it. You went and worked <laughs> out. They are just like, nope, can't like, do whoa, it. This whole gym thing was just a joke, but this dude keeps coming in. That's actually... Funny thing is, is that's how 90% of gyms operate, is, uh, like... I don't know what the actual stats are, but people sign up for gym memberships and then they just don't go. And that pays and subsidizes it for those of us who actually do go. Because they don't have enough equipment to handle. Like, if everyone who has a gym membership came in at the same time, they would not all fit. Like, not just because they're fat, but also because of that. <laughs> so I think we well, we started you off with uh, Strong Lifts 5x5. Five five. And if anyone from yes. Fit on 4chan is listening, fuck you. Strong lifts 5x5 five five is a good beginner workout routine. And no, he's not going to do a bro split. Shut up. See, what happened was the first time I went, uh, and I think we'll, we'll get deeper into how you should feel after like your first workout with Strong Lifts and all that. <laughs> how, how, how did your first workout make you feel? Like, as a person. Well, like, I was like, man, I really hurt. And now I realize it's probably because I wasn't doing it right. Well, no, it depends and on so, what like, kind here's, here's of hurt it like like the the lady there the gym that i go to was owned by a russian couple that's always a she good like, sign came up to me with a very thick accent it was like here i give you program to do because you you look very dangerous while you squat and so she gave me a bro split thing that i did for Jesus. Like two months, and then i had to like change well it's important to know if it was work. actually a bro split or not because a bro split is like i do upper body for one day and then lower body for another day and tons of pointless isolation exercises yeah, it was pretty much that. Okay, yeah, so that's a bro split. All right, so let's get into our first topic of discussion. What is Strong Lifts 5x5, and why do you recommend it? So Strong Lifts 5x5 is a very, very easy-to-learn uh, beginner workout. 
And the 5x5 five five is five sets of five reps. The reason I recommend it is because it's almost impossible to fuck up and it's really, really easy to learn. And it takes like zero time at the gym. And what it does is it helps you build a strong base of strength to work off of. Because I think like the most demoralizing thing about going to the gym, at least when you're starting out, is no matter how like physically large you are, like if you're a manlet like me, or if you're like a six foot tall person, when you first start going to the gym, there are going to be people there who are shorter than you, or people who even look smaller than you who are lifting heavy ass weight. And it's pretty depressing when you're like, holy shit, I'm weak as fuck. Like, when I because like you're over there thinking like like when I first went I could barely I could bench like the bar and then like once I got past ten like five pounds on there I'm like I oh boy I'm already feeling this and I was th- I was worried I'm like oh man yes yeah, so, I feel like I'm I'm a weak baby boy so like h- how tall are you I am five foot ten yeah five foot ten so I'm five seven on a good day and uh, I I can bench well see I have a I have a fucked up left arm. That's an excuse. Uh, I broke it when I was like 13. But I still bench um, like one and a half plate, generally speaking, for, for reps. Which uh, plate is is gym bro speak for uh, a 45 pound weight. Or if you're in a civilized country, a 20 kilogram weight. <laughs> yeah, burger <laughs> That's units. right. I didn't even think about that. So one plate is uh, two 45 pound plates on either side of the bar. So that's 135 pounds. And that's pounds. important. That's important to remember it's the two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> but uh, so strong, <laughs> getting back to strong lifts, is it's really, really easy because here's, what it, here's the rundown of week one for strong lifts. Squat five by five, bench press five by five, barbell row five by five. That's Monday. Wednesday is squat five by five, overhead press five by five, deadlift one by five. Friday is back to squat five by five, bench press five by five, barbell row five by five. So you have a total of one, two, three, four, five exercises to learn, and you only do three of them a day. I mean, this it's not, it's not going to be super great for like cardiovascular health and all that, and you can always add in cardio if you want to, you know, kill your gains and not get big. But yeah, cardio just if you uh, if you move your legs real fast and like you walk around, it'll just drain all the energy that you're using to build your muscles. Literally saps and it. It just goes to that from your muscles. Yeah, it zaps it into the ether. It actually breaks the laws of thermodynamics and all that yeah. by destroying the matter. It eliminates it. The, the reason strong lifts is good is because those, if you can learn those, uh, the big three are in there, which is squat, bench, press, and deadlift. If you can learn those and do those with good form, you're pretty much going to have no problems with any of the other like smaller isolation exercises and curls and all that. So mm-hmm. once you get those down with good form, which will take a while, you'll have a good base of strength to build off of and do like a, a different routine. Like I do ice cream fitness. And another... Yeah, another good thing about it is the app. There's an official app that just makes it even easier to keep track of. All right, yeah. here's what you do. It's got references for your form for all of it. Gives you instructions like, hey, like you know, when you're squatting, you know, chest out, get your legs out like that, and you can watch it while you're, you know, resting between sets. And yeah, the app's really good. Like, I hope they pay us for this pl- podcast plug. They're not going to, but you know. So, some important questions I had about the app that I wasn't sure of at first. So. It says uh, on each thing, it's called Strong Lifts 5 by 5 And on the thing, it'll have like, you know, a uh, squat. It'll have three sets of five. Yeah. And I was confused as to why it said three by five. Oh, that's probably a warm-up set. So what, what does that mean? Does it just mean two sets with only the bar? And so, then... So what you do is you start, you all, it, with the, the 5 by 5 program, you, you generally speaking always start with just the bar. So you can practice uh, form. And then you move up like five to 10 kilograms until you get to your workout weight. So you do one rep of, uh, you do five reps of just the bar. Then the next set of like five reps with five kilograms on each side, then whatever, doing that up to you get to your workout weight. Mm -hmm. And then you do five, five by five of your workout weight. So when you, so if someone's just starting, they would just do, they would start with just the bar. Yeah. And then they would add like five onto it, do five more. Yeah. 
and then if you know another five until they get to a point where it's like they're actually feeling like they have to push to get it up and all that. Well, yeah. So that you're, and then they set that as the weight you're, that they're going to be doing from there on. Yeah. So your five by five weight should be what you can reasonably do twenty five reps of, you know, in five sets. So if you get to that last, you should be pretty gassed at on your last rep of your last set. Like, you should be at the point where you're like, one more would probably be too many. Okay. But it's okay to start a little lighter and build up to that point. Like, you don't have to go so hard that you that you fail a rep to figure out where you should be. Especially with something like the deadlift, where you can fuck yourself up real hard if you don't have the proper form built Yeah, yet. deadlift form is really important. Squat form is really important. I mean, form is just... Important- form is really important. Yeah, an important thing to remember, and I made this mistake too. Okay, so the bar weighs forty five pounds. Yes. So when it's like, okay, you add, you add, uh, let's say you're adding ten pounds to it, that doesn't mean you take a ten pound weight and put it on the left side, and a ten pound weight and put it on the right side. No, it's twenty pounds. I don't <laughs> understand how pounds. this happens. Every single time they're like, Here was "Do like- you count the bar?" No, the bar doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> here was my thought process so okay here's 45 on the bar okay i'll add 10 on this side and 10 on that side to stabilize it and then i didn't think oh no wait i'm still lifting the 10 from the other side no matter what but i don't i just i i don't it's not a very smart it's like literally basic addition i don't know how people are always like yeah i did uh i did 20 i did 20 kilogram uh deadlifts the other day it's like so you deadlifted just the bar? You're like, no, it's 20 kilograms, you know, on both sides. So you mean 60 kilograms because the bar weighs 20 <laughs> and each one of the plates weighs 20. Like, oh, I didn't know you count the bar and both of the plates. See, that's what happened to me where it's like, okay, uh, I'm reading the, I was looking at the thing. It's like, okay, uh, deadlift at, okay, like 95. All right, let's see. All right, so 45 in the bar, 45, 45. All righty, here we go. <laughs> Yeah. And then I'm like, no, wait a second. That's like 140. No, it's like when people are like, yeah, I did body weight squats. I loaded, I put my own body weight on the bar. <laughs> okay. I did something similar to that once. How? It was on, like one of those, it, it was like, a, it, was, it was part of like the weird bro splits that they had me doing where I was just like doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah. And it was like something where I stood on a machine, and like pressed myself up with like my toes or something. Oh, you mean calf and I'm like, uh, okay, I'll put this on 240, I guess. <laughs> All right, there we go. You put 240 <laughs> pounds on calf raises? Yeah, I fucked up my foot. <laughs> you have no fucking <laughs> shit. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me <laughs> that, that you're on a machine where you lift your entire, with where you lift the weight with just your calves, like going up onto your It was toes. like my calves, and there was like a thing that was like on my shoulders. And you and so thought, I put my hands on top, and I just went, whoop. You thought that putting 240 pounds onto that was a good idea. Well, it was really, really easy to do it with everything below that. <laughs> what I don't understand is people don't seem to get like, like in the gym, everybody gets, I don't know, like, taken out of of how much things actually weigh because they want to show off and be like oh i can lift so much but like you imagine there was a dude lifting. that was like using um a leg press machine he's like hey check this out and he puts it at like 360 pounds is pushing it with one leg yeah but that's not and i'm that just looking at thinking like if you slip like your leg's gonna snap now there's safety things on the the leg press if you're doing it right there's a there's a safety catch i, I don't think he was doing he probably it right. wasn't doing it right <laughs> But it's just like that's like machines are nice if you're like an old lady. Well, because they take away having to do like stabilizing and stuff. Yeah, machines are not bad. They serve their purpose, but for a beginner, there you miss out on a lot of of the like stabilizing muscle formation when you let the machine do the work for you. Like with a Smith machine for squats, you lose all of the the stabilizing stuff that you get from having to balance the bar on your back. So with, with the squat, the, the Smith machine just holds it in place for you, which is, it's sort of self-defeating. Yeah. I, I still so, don't understand how people don't count the bar right. It, it's because with, they see these weights and they think, they don't think about the bar weighing anything. They just think of it like, okay, maybe the bar, they don't know how much the bar weighs. 
Well, yeah. Because it's like, okay, I can I don't know, maybe the bar weighs like five pounds or something. I don't know weight well, at all. Well, an interesting thing is, is if you're at a real shitty gym, the bar might not be Olympic standard. Like Olympic standard bars weigh 20 kilograms or 45 pounds. And if they're not Olympic standard, they can be a lot less. And that's bad. Like you don't want to, you don't want to do that because you can seriously like tweak yourself if you're expecting more weight than is actually there. Mm-hmm. But most gyms have Olympic standard bars. So it's, it's not a big yeah. concern. So, so one important thing about like the, the first time you go to a gym for strong lifts you're going to want to like practice. You're, you're going to want to like take a broom handle and pretend it's a 45 yeah, pound bar. Yeah, for sure. And you're going to want to practice them, especially the deadlift. Especially deadlift, um, squat too, because a lot of people have oh, yeah. problems with shoulder flexibility. And so when you get oh, underneath yeah. the bar, like the, the number one mistake that I see people making is either leaning too far forward with squats. So you're putting way too much uh, pressure on the bar on your neck, which is bad. So basically people end up doing high bar squats when they should be doing low bar squats and high bar squats Mm -hmm. are, I don't know, I I don't recommend them. It's much better in terms of like balance and center of center of mass to do low bar squats. And you can, you can want to make sure that when you're coming up, you're not like, Oh, Hey, look, I'm falling backwards a bit. Yeah. You want to make sure that you've got it on, you've got it at least somewhat under control so that you're ready for an actual weight because like 45 pounds isn't going to kill you. Like, you know, like when you're starting with your squat, you're going to be doing the 45 just so you have like, until you can get like, cause squatting is like a real weird motion. If you don't know what you're doing, there's a lot of guides, but like, yeah. it's really good to practice. Like I was just sitting in my room with a broomstick pretending to squat you got, for like 20 minutes. You just look up some, some Russians wearing Adidas tracksuits and copy what they do and you'll get, you'll get it. You get that slab squat. <laughs> Slobs are the king of squats. Everybody knows it. But- All right. So the other aspect of lifting, uh, more important, actually, is diet. Actually. Yeah. Diet. I mean, okay. So the thing is, is like, if you're, if you're a skinny fat to fat nerd, I guarantee that you can lose, you can lose a significant amount of weight in the next month by doing just one thing. And that's stop drinking soda. If you stop drinking soda, unless you're drinking only diet soda with like no calories in it, then I don't know, it, it, it won't help as much. But if you stop drinking full sugar soda and replace it with water, you'll lose weight. You cannot outlift a bad diet. You just can't. That's true. Like people harp on diet. And the, the, the problem is, it's like Americans are fat. And I don't want to go into one of these big old rants about like, fuck you fat people because... Mm-hmm. it's it's very easy to get complacent with your diet like i play a lot of video games or, you know i read a lot of manga i sit on my ass a lot so it's easy it's to just like reach for a bag of chips and mindlessly consume and i think pro- see here's the important thing like when i was young I, w- I was raised with some very bad eating habits i'm pretty sure like, like everyone I was would- yeah, it's my mom would always like, okay, we have to, f- you finish everything in the plate, don't leave any food after, <laughs> yeah. shit like that, or like eat when you're stressed, eat when you're bored. But here's the imp- really important thing. Those things didn't make me lift the fork and put it in my mouth. Yep. I made that choice. You can't blame these fucking things. Like, those people are like, no, no, I have a thyroid. Con- Fuck off. You do not. <laughs> you're not one of these 1% of people who can't lose weight. You're just being a lazy, you're being a sad cunt when you <laughs> you're can sick be a sick cunt. cunt. Exactly. See, the, the word of ziz is already getting to you. We're all going to make it, brah. I think. We're all going to make it, brah. For me, the, the things that helped my diet out the most and this is this is just in terms of being more healthy like if you start having uh if you start having lifting and like powerlifting being a hobby then diet gets all weird because right now i am drinking a protein shake that has a vanilla mass gainer protein powder in it uh greek yogurt strawberries and some frozen fruit and it's like drinking goddamn soft serve ice cream and i fucking i'll show you a mass gainer oh i hate it but i'm trying to gain weight because i want well because i want to get huge so get huge stay but for like he's just lifting weights all the time (laughs) i love that onion (laughs) that onion article a good another good thing about lifting uh to try and fix your diet is that like, uh, you're like, you think to yourself like, all right, I put in all this effort 
and I did all this stuff. I don't want to eat yeah. this garbage so to make it go to waste. That's good. So you're able to like, it, it's it's hard to break a diet because you're so used to it. It's not impossible. You can do it. It's a, it's entirely within your power. Yeah, don't be a bitch. And lifting will help a lot with that because you're like, do I really want a can of Dr Pepper right now? See, yeah, that goes into eh. like the the two things that helped me the most in terms of like because I started out as a real skinny fat little guy like there are pictures of me when i first came to japan that ooh, <laughs> they're not good i don't like looking at them it's like it, it, it was embarrassing like i don't know it's being fit is fun and i think the two the two things that really helped me with diet the most are what's called mindful eating so a lot of times when people eat they're not really paying attention like you're doing something else and i mean that's true for me too like i always I like, I never just sit down at a table and eat and note and don't do anything else. You know, you, you watch, you watch a show, you're playing some video games, you know, you're doing something, but it's important mm-hmm. when you, when you want to focus on losing weight, it's to really pay attention while you're eating. Like you, you think about what you're doing. So, you know, it's easy to go through a whole bag of chips without thinking about it. But if you sit there and think, you know, am I really enjoying this or am I just eating to fill time? Like, am I just eating to have, have something in my hands? And you'll find that like when you when you think about what you're eating and when you when you actually put some mental effort into going, is this is this enjoyment that I get from, you know, eating this donut really worth, you know, sabotaging my my uh, fitness goals? And as as lame as that sounds, it really does help. Like an important thing that I found is I think like, okay, if I ever think I'm hungry, I'm like, okay, would I be hungry enough to just eat an apple? I don't know why an apple. Yeah. But just like, am I hungry enough to eat an apple right now? Some, if yes, then I'm hungry. If no, if I if I think like, eh, I don't really want an apple, then I'm not hungry and I don't eat. Yeah. The other the other thing is like, you 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 change your your uh, your conception of food. Like, I think for a lot of Western people and for a lot of just people in general, food is a big source of fun in in our lives. Like, you think, oh shit, yeah, big old fucking stack of pancakes. I'm in for a good time. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But if you're if you're thinking about like, hey, I want to lose weight, you have to stop thinking about food as a, a big piece of enjoyment. Like there's there's things you could treat yourself to for sure. Like if you're counting calories and you've got some extra room, there's no reason why you can't have a candy bar. Like it's not good for you. But if you treat your your general day-to-day eating as food is fuel, not fun, you'll find yourself going like yeah, I could have this candy bar, but then, like, it's just sugar and carbs. Like, it's not going to help me mm-hmm. at the gym. I could I could have this candy bar, or I could have, like, uh, a big steak later, or I could have, you know, some chicken and rice. Yeah, you could save it. Yeah. Save it up. Put it in your GBP. And when you... F- Put it in your GBP bank. <laughs> Got to get those tendies. When, when, you, when you find yourself doing that, you start thinking, like, do, is this really worth it? Like, do I really want to eat this right now? Or would I rather have a better workout? And for me, I find lifting to be really, really enjoyable. Like it's one of my biggest hobbies. And so I'm like, nah. Like at a certain point, you'll start seeing results. You'll be like, whoa, hey. Because I remember uh, when I, like about a year ago, and I'm like, I, I grabbed my arm for some reason. I'm like, whoa, hold on a second. That actually feels like a bicep. Getting a little juicy. Flabby arm. Holy shit. Like, let me put it like this. And then I'm like, damn, look at that. I used to be so skinny, like so spooky skeleton that, you know, like a styrofoam cup, Mm -hmm. you know, the, like the rim from a styrofoam cup, how sometimes people like flip them inside out. Yeah. Yeah. I could take the rim from a styrofoam cup and slide it around my bicep. Jesus. Yeah. How tiny. See, I'm the opposite. In eighth grade, I had a rough time. I weighed 280 pounds, my dude. That's. I've lost 40 pounds of that already. That's but, big. Whew, that's big. I was a big boy. I was literally Pepe with a big boy shirt. It wasn't good. <laughs> no. But see, and I think that. Some tough times. That gets into the other aspect of of, of dieting. In, uh, not, see, diet, calling it dieting is a bad idea. You shouldn't call it that because it's not dieting, it's just changing how you live. Like if you treat it as a temporary, like I'm on a diet, you will never keep it up. You just have to change fundamentally how you eat, and and or you'll be or otherwise you'll end up like you'll end up like uh, like a housewife trying all these silly these silly oh, diets and then giving them up the, because they don't work. Yeah, 
Like calories in, it's calories out. Diet. That's all it is. You can lose weight eating only Twinkies. You'll feel like shit, <laughs> but you could do it. <laughs> Twinkies and a multivitamin. As long as you're under your your daily calorie, uh, your your daily calorie allotment, you will lose weight. You don't want to go with these dumb meme diets like Go Mad, <laughs> gallon of milk a day. Because I've got a story related Whoa, to milk. You got like my brother Zach. You got Go Mad. My brother Zach would drink a lot of milk, and so him and his friends oh. uh, invented this fun game. The game was uh, they would run a lap around like the middle school track, and then drink a glass of chocolate milk, and then take another lap. And drink another glass of chocolate oh, milk. Oh, Jesus. And take another lap. And no. The, and you would be kicked out when you threw up. <laughs> so you want to know what the winner got. The person who threw up, like, didn't throw up at all. They got to drink the rest of the gallon of milk. That's disgusting. Holy shit. <laughs> and then inevitably throw up. That's not a... That's what, that's what a meme diet is. I mean, essentially. Like, there, there's something to be said for ketosis and, like doing a, a, a really, really low carbohydrate diet and all that. Like if you really, really want to burn weight fast, but it's a pain in the ass and you're better off just eating a balanced diet of lower calories, like lower, lower yeah. your calories. Because if you do something that's going to be a pain in the ass to maintain, it, if you start falling behind or not seeing things yeah. fast enough, you're going to be like, oh, well, ah, God damn it. And you'll lose motivation. Well, see, that's the thing is people overestimate how, or, uh, how quickly – uh, you'll see results because you will not see like physical results for a few months. Like you're not going to look that much different between when you start putting up bigger numbers on the bar and like actually lifting more weight to, you know, being jacked like me. Uh, you you won't see that difference for a few months. Like, like the first few times you go, and this happened to me, uh, I'll go on, you know, I'll do the, the squats, I'll do all that stuff. And it'll be like after the first time, and I'll go home and I'll be like, God damn, I hurt. Yes. And then like two days will pass and it'll be time to go again. And I'll be like, oh, God damn, I still hurt. Well, there's there's two kinds of hurts. There's there's good hurt, which is just like lactic acid build up in your muscles. Uh, and then there's bad hurt, which is uh, twinges and like sharp pain. If you get sharp pain, you stop. If you're just like sore, you, you keep going. Mm-hmm. As long- like you, you have to get a prop because what happened to me was that I was doing the squats incorrectly. I wasn't putting my legs out enough. So I was like lifting every single thing with just my upper thighs oh, yeah. instead of like spread. So I'm like, oh, God, my legs hurt so bad. And then I'd be like, OK, well, I can't go. T- I can't go today, even though it's been two days because I hurt so much. No, you gotta- and then you put it off and then everything starts to fall apart. It, consistency is like the number one thing. I have not missed a single workout uh, for for any reason other than literally being on an airplane for two years. Yeah. Do not do not make any excuses. If you have to force yourself to do it, do Don't it. Don't be a Eventually, little bitch. It's going to become routine. It's going to become routine, and then after so long, you're going to start to enjoy it. Like, oh hey, time for this. Time for this daily part, or not daily, <laughs> but like three times a week routine. What would your wife think? And it'll if become you quit. normal. Honestly, exactly. What would she now think? on to the third? And by far most, most important. important part of lifting. Most important. Waifus. Or waifu. Waifus. Because, you know, more than one waifu will ruin your waifu. So this is this is the actual reason for the podcast. The actual, yes. And this is my journey Ooh. to find a 2D anime digital waifu. Because 3D is PD. For me. <laughs> See, th- that's the thing is, like, this, this fits into... Uh, one of the big, the big reason to lift is normie cover. Like, I don't know if you guys know of, of Debito Kun. He's a, oh boy. Maybe we, we should probably link Davy, the video of Debito Kun into, in the, in the description because. I will, but go ahead and describe it. Debito Kun is, he's like, I don't know. So he's a mythical figure in, in the anime uh, in the 4chan anime community, you don't want to be Davey Token. He's this guy. He moved to Japan. He's a fat motherfucker. He's just huge. <laughs> he speaks shit Japanese. He's got tons of anime crap all over his room. And these two Japanese comedians just rip into his ass. Like, they tear him open. It's horrible. 
you don't want to be David Okun. But imagine, if you will, if David Okun was jacked. Imagine he was just like six pack motherfucker, big dick on campus walking around. You, you could wear whatever you want. You could have like an obnoxious made cafe anime Miku t shirt on. But if you're jacked, everyone's like, haha, look at that normal guy. He's so funny. Because he's got everything together. Yeah, he's a normal they, they'll person. They'll think your he's life is together. He's doing this because he finds it fun. Exactly. This like I walk down the street, or I walk in Akihabara, or whatever, with like my uh, my Kill La Kill three star uh, Gakseifuku t shirt, and people are like, "Ha ha! Look at that guy. That sure is funny. Wow, his pecs are large." <laughs> he must be a normal. person. You can get away with it. They they must exactly. He must have his life together. How wrong they are. <laughs> How very, very wrong you are. No- normie cover is like, ooh. Plus, like, the benefits of being fit is extend beyond. Like, you can go on hikes. You can go do cool shit. Like, you don't have to worry about being, like, that guy who gets out of breath climbing a flight of stairs. Like, that's how I started lifting is I, I ran up a flight of stairs and I was I was out of breath at the top and I was like, well, shit, <laughs> what am I doing with my life? I should get huge. Like for me, I think the tipping point when I was really heavy was I was like, I'm just standing still and I like am losing my breath. Like what the fuck? Yeah, that's that was around like, hold on a second. That's like give me a sleep apnea machine. Like I'm <laughs> fucking obese. Let's get out of this. Yeah, Get me out of here, Malik. <laughs> I was like, get me out. I stacked up a whole bunch of cardboard boxes and hid behind them. (laughs) Get me out of here, Malik. So this gets us into why we lift. And why do we lift? For for our waifus. Our waifus. Exactly. Or future waifus. Yeah. See, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that uh, Rika from Chunibyo is a good choice for you. She's a nice girl. You, you, You probably like her. See... So I've listened, I've watched the first episode. Such a good show. And for those who don't know, it's about this uh, guy. He's like, he's just out of middle school Mm -hmm. and he's like finding like, he did like a whole bunch of super cringy stuff. Like he's like pretending to have like a dark side. I'm the dark flame master. (laughs) Exactly. And he's like, he he's like, he graduates. He's like, oh my God, what was I doing? And so he goes to like a, a high, a different high school from really far away. Except there was a girl that moved there that saw him doing this embarrassing stuff. And so now he's locked in and he can't let her tell everyone what a fucking well, dork out he Yeah, was. because she thinks it's the coolest fucking shit ever. Because she's still, she's still Chunyi as fuck. And Chunibyo is like the, the eighth grade syndrome thing in Japan where it's like, you know, I've got a dark side. Like, I've got two personalities. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. A twisted fucking psychopath. Except twisted dark flame master, but she's still uh, she's she's still like a one hundred percent Chuni, and he's trying to put it behind him. It's a good show. I really like Chuni Bio, and I feel like I will give it a shot as part of the podcast. I'm willing to watch up to, let's say eight episodes of any anime you link me <laughs> that you believe would have a waifu that would no, match. No. That would match. The me. reason I I think Rika is good is because you mentioned desire to bully. As, Extremely so. See, Rika is is she's made for bullying. She she demands bullying. <laughs> she just says the cringiest shit, and you're like, "Wow, I have to bully her." And we're gonna get we're gonna get like anti- you just want to anti bully rangers in the in the comments section. Please link anti bully ranger in the in the comments section. I beg you. I will not. And uh, well, that and she would unironically watch Homestuck. Or read Homestuck. Uh, it, the proper term is experience. It's for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, if there's a female version of Caliborn somewhere, fucking boom, get a big red rubber stamp. Bam, I mean, I'm sure there's it. a couple female versions of Caliborn on DeviantArt. Yeah, I know. They're called Kellyo. <laughs> dead sister. <laughs> that he's traveling the universe to, like, find. I shouldn't have like, mentioned Homestuck. This is the lifting And also, cast. like, have relations with by turning into a giant snake. Uruburu, snake eating its own tail. The universe is cyclical in nature. Wake up. So, see, this is some Chunibyo shit. Which is why you should watch the show. <laughs> because she would... Rika would literally know all of the fucking pester chum chat. Oh. Oh, God, she would. I just realized, like, I know... All right, so there's... 
Uh, 24 plus 8. There's 30, 42 different typing quirks and chat handle names that I can Jesus remember off the top Christ. of my head for every single... Jesus Christ. And I can remember every single typing quirk. I can remember the colors. For some of them, I can remember the hexadecimal colors. The actual hex code uh, for I the can... color. Yeah, I can remember because Carcats is 696969 and Kankri is 9696. I mean, that's six. not that hard to remember, but... Uh, I also remember Calamorns because he's my sweet baby child. He's like Papyrus, if Papyrus was evil. <laughs> Twist. <laughs> Fallen Papyrus. Punished Papyrus. But see, the important thing about having a waifu is is because we, who have been discarded from the, the, the real life, you know, people uh, of having friends and, and like, social abilities, need, need some sort of motivation to keep lifting. And that's where the waifu comes in. You gotta... Exactly. So who who do you lift for? I, I, I lift for Pulp, my man. So hopping off a of waifu talk, uh, we'll go ahead and start this off with the first status report. Yeah. Uh, I started lifting about uh, two weeks, I think. We'll go with two weeks. Call it two. And uh, started 240. All my weight was like just like the bar. Mm-hmm. 240 and, uh, body weight? I've lost... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant the like <laughs> lifting it on the fucking thing, you piece of shit. But yeah, two forty body weight. Uh, I've lost five pounds since then. That's probably water weight, All right. but whatever. Well, no, I mean some of it uh, is some of it is probably real real weight loss. Like five pounds of water weight is sort of excessive. So some of that is real weight loss. Yeah, five pounds just from not eating garbage, yeah. no longer drinking soda, yeah. and just starting strong with five by five. Yeah. So we'll be doing uh, these podcasts every two weeks. It won't replace the normal let me tell you about. I don't even know if I'm going to put them on iTunes. It's just a segment. That's an extra $8. Ooh. It's an extra $8 a month to have it on Seriously? there. Seriously, I'm willing to do that for the Dungeons & Dragons podcast, but not for Swole Quest because it's going to be up once every fucking 14 days. Yeah, just, I mean, YouTube's fine. Uh, I guess progress report from my end is uh, I'm currently, what, uh, 74 kilograms? And I'm uh, trying to get my deadlift to a uh, hundred. I'm sorry, uh, deadlift. Did you mean diddly lift arena? Diddlies, my diddlies up to a uh, hundred and eighty-two kilograms. Um, I'm trying to get. What is that in freedom units? Uh, f- that's a little over four hundred and seven pounds. That's a lot of weight. Yeah, I hit one eighty. That's like two. That's like me and a half. I hit one hundred and eighty kilograms once which is four plate so i'm trying to move up from you can carry me you can carry me around on your shoulders i can actually i'm trying to get my uh squat up to uh 160 kilograms so a little over fuck i don't use burger units anymore (laughs) i can only think in 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 kilograms now which i guess is good somebody do that do it yourself put it into a calculator 160 kilograms for one rep, my one rep max, and uh, bench is uh, garbage, so I'm not going to tell you what it is. But uh, we're we're working <laughs> right. on it. So we will, yeah, we will see you guys again in two weeks in the progress report. So uh, uh, in 14 days from now, and remember, gotta get fit, gotta get swole, gotta get big, in closing, get huge. Do it for her. Don't bitch out. <laughs>